Welcome to another Wisdom Pod with Bob Woods. He is CMO and partner at Social Sales Link. We're going to talk about social selling, podcasting, everything in between today. This pod is presented to you by podbear.com. That's my podcasting agency. If you want to start scale, be invited to pods, monetize the unconventional way. You can go to podbear.com for that. Bob, welcome to the pod. Tell me a bit more about yourself and about what you're up to nowadays. Yeah, so... um. So, so like you said, I, uh, I'm, I'm one of the partners at, at social sales link. We do social selling primarily on LinkedIn. Social selling is, is essentially using social channels and social techniques along with sales techniques, essentially, uh, for that all important task of getting the sales conversation started. We can obviously help people go through the process with social as well but our primary focus is on getting that sales com uh sales conversation started and that works primarily through you know using content making sure that someone's linkedin profile is built in such a way that it leads with value always has value and lets people know that if you're looking for a particular solution this person can handle it and doing all of that without being salesy as well and that's something that's huge for us we don't like being salesy we love authenticity we love being genuine while while at the same time building up sales reps and sales organizations um uh thought leadership when it comes to whatever industry it is that they're in let me share my screen here and yeah check my LinkedIn profile. Like, what would you say about that LinkedIn profile from the get-go? Yeah, so so it's funny you mentioned that because I was looking at it prior to coming on air here and and definitely saw some things. So, um, yeah, so why don't you go ahead and click through to your profile and then do me a favor and bring up mine. Yeah, I have yours right here. you create here. in a separate tab? because because I do want to show you some some differences here. So um let's 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 talk about the headline first. So 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 what's immediately under the uh, name. The way that we do headlines for salespeople and people who are build, who who want to build up thought leadership like in whatever it is that they do, we we kind of have a formula for it, but within that formula we can go far and wide with it. So we like to talk about who you help, how you help them, the services that you provide, and the results that you bring. But we do that in a very client-facing way so that you're not talking about yourself. You are uh, you are phrasing it in more of a, of, of a way that addresses why they're there and not necessarily about what you do because we feel that you don't have the right to necessarily talk about yourself yet until you get probably farther down into the about section. Right. So in yours, for example, you know, I get um, like that type of language. We, we purposely draw all of that stuff out of that. So there are ways to do this and ways that you have yours done. It's not that yours is bad. We just need to change the focus of it a little bit more. Yeah, so I get you. I'm just noticing an error here. I get you 100 meets a week through unconventional AI outreach tactics. Then I have like icons. So, because I pitch many businesses in there. So maybe I should just focus on one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very important uh, point is focus. So, um, just like when it comes to figuring out what you're going to do for a podcast and things like that you have to figure out who your audience is going to be. And quite frankly, the more specific the audience that you have, unless you're like, a, you know, unless you're like a Kim Kardashian or, you know, a, a really broad and general type of, of, of influencer, you definitely want to attract and speak to one particular audience. And in our case as salespeople, it's an audience of prospects. So that's essentially your ICP, your, your, your ideal client profile. So you always have to keep that in mind as well as you're developing content for your uh, profile. Because if you're not speaking to them 
and they don't know that they are the audience that you're speaking to, you're going to lose them like that. Essentially, you're you're going to lose them very, very quickly. Hmm. And then what else uh, catches your attention positively or negatively in my profile? Yeah, so um, I. I do like the fact that you have a featured section. That's really good. So many people do not have that featured section there. So the way that I view the featured section is, is essentially like um, a produce section in a grocery store. You should always have your not only your best content or your best vegetables or whatever in the case of, of a grocery store, but it's got to be like the freshest stuff as well. So in other words, it has to be, you know, recent stuff and, and stuff that is relevant to your audience. So, um, you know, this is again, where, where the ICP comes in and this is where you need to be generating content that your audience wants, wants to read and not necessarily the things that you want to talk about. I mean, because I could talk about, sales stuff when it comes to LinkedIn and, and things like that all day long. But if no one in my audience wants to see that and they want their problem solved, what I'm talking about is, or what I want to talk about about myself is probably not going to attract them. So you, so you really need to address their concerns, uh, why they might be there, some of the problems that they might be looking to solve. And do that again, like I said at the very top, in a in, in a very non-salesy, value-driven way, so that you're driven, so so that you can show that not only you know what you're talking about, but that you're willing to provide them value throughout the entire process. We we kind of have a saying here that we borrowed from like several other people. It's probably not the first time you've heard this, but uh, it's you know stop stop talking about how you help people and just help people. That's what we're all about. That's what we train other people to do as well. And quite frankly, I just personally think that that's the way business should be done anyhow. Right, value, value, value. Now let's check at some outreach that I did or that I have in my mailbox. So that's like a podcast invite, super simple. And it's not super personalized, but it's value like, um, what do you think about that outreach message? Hey, would love you have my CEO. Can I send you more info? Yeah. So I think that specifically this actually, okay. So first of all, this does look like some of the stuff that you sent me yeah. and, and, and I'm here right now. So, so I think that that does kind of prove that, you know, it, it, it does work. I think that it's different for a podcast, being a guest on a podcast, as opposed to someone who is who is actually trying to determine if there's a basis to 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 have an initial sales conversation. I mean, because the only thing that this is costing me is time, and I love being a podcast guest. I love being on my own podcast too, and things like that. So it's kind of a no-brainer for me. When you're talking about actually selling something, though, uh, it 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 gets to be a little bit different. So. I do like the fact that you, in your initial messaging, you really spelled out exactly what it is that you like, what it is that you don't like. You suggested a lot of things to potentially do uh, or or that we could potentially do and, and talk about during your show, which is exactly what we're doing right now. So, I mean, the expectations that you built are now being fulfilled. And I think that that's very important too. So, I mean... I think that with that specific message that you have there, it worked very well. Right. Seems to me that most outreach nowadays on LinkedIn is the same, you know, it's like pitching something. So how can people deliver like a great offer, for example, like podcasting and keep it simple, keep it relevant and keep it of value because 99% of what we receive nowadays on LinkedIn is somewhat spammy. So what's your trick for that? Oh, yeah. Oh yes. So um so um couple things. I guess it depends on on your starting point. So let's so let's just take a specific example. Um let's say that I think that you're a target for 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 what we do and um and and this is maybe just a bit of a cold outreach. I'm not sure, but we encourage people before they even reach out to people to see if 
that person, in other words, you in this case, is publishing content or if they're commenting on other people's content. Uh, if they are, start using those as opportunities to just comment back or leave comments, but do things in a very value added way. In other words, you know, con just generally speaking, a comment like, you know, uh, great post, Charles. That does no one any good whatsoever. Now, if you want to say great post, Charles, because X, Y, and Z, and I agree with X, Y, and Z, and really add to what's there, you can definitely do things like that. So maybe do that a couple of times. I call that process uh, pinging on someone's radar so that when you do go and reach out to someone for a connection, first of all, when you do that, always put a note in there about why you want to connect with them. But then at that point, um, you, Charles, should recognize me as someone who has commented on, on their post a couple of times and really added value there and supported what, what, what you were doing. And then at that point, you would, uh, you would probably feel more comfortable and accepting me as a connection. At this point, most people will, or unfortunately, most people on LinkedIn nowadays are doing the connect and pitch. We we say that connect and pitch is a bait and switch because that's exactly what it is. I mean, we've gone through all this effort to, you know, build, you know, to start building a relationship only to slam the brakes on it and throw a direct pitch at you. And we think that that's completely and totally wrong. What we would do instead is, you know, hey, thanks for connecting with me. I We've been talking for a little bit already. I have some content, whatever form that is, on a subject, whatever subject that is. If you're interested, please let me know and I'll send you a link to it. So in other words, you're not just thrusting content at them right away. You're asking permission to send the content to them. And that's actually very important. Some people might think, eh, does it really matter? It really does matter because you're giving them the option to, to actually opt into it. And, you know, and again, because you're trying to build a relationship to a point where hopefully they'll, they'll want to have a sales conversation with you. It's definitely a bit softer way to do it, but because you're building a relationship, it's got to be softer because you're dealing with another person. You're not dealing with someone who's just ultimately going to sign on the bottom on, 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 on the dotted line for something. This is a person you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't piss them off essentially by doing some of the stupid stuff that, that we're seeing, you know, that I see that obviously you're seeing on, on LinkedIn, like all the time, essentially, if you do like those types of things, you're already going to stand out from most people who are on LinkedIn who are doing the stupid shit and people shouldn't be doing this stuff. Right. And the LinkedIn voice thing that you have that I'm seeing on your LinkedIn, how do you get that and is that something that's gonna impact your reach and your views or is it just for authority linkedin voice i'm not sure what you mean by that yeah the linkedin voice thing uh top social oh, selling oh, voice yeah, yeah, for example yeah. yeah yeah so right now so 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 for those of you who don't know what Charles is, is talking about, LinkedIn has these contributed articles out there now where LinkedIn uses AI to generate these kind of generic articles that people who are quote unquote experts in their field then go in and contribute to um, in an effort to not only share their value and, and, you know, help people out, you know, again, don't talk about how you help people, just help people. Um, if you do that enough, you can get these badges on your profile. So if you go to my profile right now, which is uh, Bob Woods, it's really simple, B-O-B-W-O-O-D-S, you'll, you'll see that top selling is social selling voice up there. That just means that I've contributed to a lot of articles and gave some hopefully good advice to people. And because again, this, this all goes to thought leadership. I'm Definitely making an effort to put myself out there as a thought leader, because I ultimately do want to start sales conversations with people if, if, if we can help them on an individual basis or their companies on a corporate basis. And hopefully because I'm adding value, um, I think 
uh, Charles in one of the outreaches you, you had to me, you mentioned like a karma bank or something like that, you know, making deposits in, into the karma bank, but I'm doing it genuinely too. I do it because I want to, I'm not doing it for a business that I do it just because that's just the kind of guy I am. But at the same time, if it comes back to me, that's great too. And I'm certain, I'm certainly not going to turn that down. So the podcast, tell me what was your thesis behind it and have you accomplished your goals that you set for it since you've started? Yeah. So with the podcast, um, our, our podcast is called making sales social. It's actually made up of, of two components that we do pretty much every week, unless someone gets sick or something like that. And, you know, we're very small. So that happens every once in a while, but generally we have two particular pieces in there. One is an interview series, which is essentially what, what, what we're doing here. We, we interview someone in, uh, you know, business, uh, sales, marketing, that type of stuff on a wide variety of topics. We also, we also publish a rebroadcast of our making sales social live sessions, which are actually on LinkedIn and a couple of other socials every week where we have, where we take a, a topic and then we also have people who send comments in and we answer their comments as well. We kind of repackage that and put that out as well. So, so we actually publish twice a week. One is the making sales social live and the other is the interview series. And just in terms of that, I mean, in terms of reach alone, we're already a top five podcast. We've done a top 5% podcast, not top five. God, that would be amazing. A top 5% podcast. Um, but, um, you know, we, we've got like 260 or 270, something like that out there. We've been around since, since, since 2020. So the longevity alone, I think is a really big goal for us. We are getting noticed out there and, you know, just spreading the word about there is there is an authentic and genuine way to do the sales process that isn't salesy and that uses LinkedIn and other socials and content and a somewhat kind of a marketing spin to things that makes your that makes either yourself or your salespeople as thought leaders in their industry and seen by others as an expert in their industry. So hopefully they won't have to do as much selling because they're talking about their stuff all the time. So hopefully people will see that and, and they'll think, Oh, these people truly are experts. And I have this problem that they can solve that they can hopefully help me solve. Let's get that conversation going. That's what it's all about. You're muted. Sorry. There you go. What are your top goals for this this year? Um, actually, a pretty major goal that we have right now um, is is has to do with AI, which everyone's talking about AI. There's no way you can get around it. Um, AI is here. It's here to stay. I actually remember. I'm old enough, I should say, to remember when this whole internet stuff started and people were still calling it the information superhighway. And people were like, you know, oh my God, what is this going to do? How is this going to affect people? I I knew enough about it to, to, to hop on early back then. And I'm thinking that this AI stuff and there's so many permutations to it is, is just going to be amazing. In fact, where we kind of unofficially coined 2024 as, as the new era of social selling, because we think that AI is going to ramp up and become more and more and more a part of it. And, um, and literally, and I, and I hate using the word literally all the time, but this is like a literally thing, like 20 minutes ago before coming on air here, I discovered that um, open AI and chat GPT are now offering officially offering team and enterprise packages as well. I don't know if that's public knowledge. I just saw it. I think it's probably pretty new. I don't know if it's a day type of thing, but it definitely is new. And um, I think that this is going to help accelerate um, chat GPT and products like it more into the enterprise and for sales teams as well, because they're able now to actually gate anything that's entered in there so that the, so that the, um, so that the large language, the, the, the LLM isn't trained for public consumption on that data. One of the big complaints about 
uh, chat uh, GPT-4 originally was that anything you put in there was public. So we would always tell people, you know, this is great to use. Just don't put your your private stuff in there because the model gets trained on it. Now, obviously, if you pay more because it costs more to do this, but if you pay more, um, the model isn't going to be trained on data anymore. And just that alone, along with some of the other features that they're coming out with, which people can find out about that them themselves. But um, I think that part alone is really going to rocket um, the use of, of chat GPT within either just, you know, smaller sales teams. I mean, even, you know, like a small sales team, like uh, what social sales link has to some of the biggest corporations out there, because they don't have to build their own GPT that somehow forks into uh chat GPT four and yet um, silos the information that are all that's already being handled. So it's evidently, and like I said, I literally just discovered it. I'm still reading about it. It sounds to me like this is a pretty easy thing to do. And my God, if you can make it easy, it's going to, it's probably going to take off like gangbusters. Where can people find out more about you, Bob? Um, socialsaleslink.com is the website. Uh, my personal page on there is socialsaleslink.com slash Bob. Also, I'm a LinkedIn guy. Just look up Bob Woods Social Sales Link and uh, feel free to to follow me. Feel free to reach out and connect with me. I'm 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 great with any of that stuff. If you do reach out and connect, just just let me know that you heard me on on here because I would like to know about it, and I'm sure that Charles would like to know about that as well.